welcome. Welcome back to Artistic License, my stream on Thursday where we do a little bit of whatever I want. And today is going to be part two of our Halloween stream where I'm playing Doki Doki Literature Club Blind. So I don't know what's going to happen. Please don't spoil me. All I know is that it's going to get crazy. Um, welcome in. Um, welcome in, Monica. I'm so glad to see you back. Um, you were, you were here with us last time for the last Doki Doki stream, so I'm really glad to see you, and you got the first this time. Kendra, welcome in. Um, I'm glad you liked our opening song there. Uh, I, I really liked picking it out. And welcome, uh, TMS Milner. Am I saying that okay? Is Milner okay to say? Uh, tell me. Um, I saw that you followed me the other day, so thank you so much for, um, for coming to the stream. Okay, we can definitely turn on baby cam, Kendra. There we go. Let me make sure that the babies are in frame. Let me get, take a second to make some little, some baby cam adjustments. Let's see. Oh, let's do it like this. Oh, no, that should be. Okay, it's not. There we go. Let's just scoot the baby cam over a little bit. And we'll drop it like that. There we go. Now you can see. Lady is here with me. Lady is here with me. The kitty cats are back. I'm back home. Um, it was a long trip, y'all, but I'm back. Welcome in, kitty. Welcome in. Uh, it was me. I was still signed into my husband's new Twitch. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, thank you for making your husband follow me, kitty. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Mr. Kitty. Yes, Mr. Kitty. And I don't think the, I don't think the goat, um sound fired off so we're gonna replay that thank you so much for all the applause and uh, and whistling guys here we go let's replay the greatest of all time because i don't think that happened i mean i saw saw you play it, but i don't think it oh no it's just really quiet <laughs> i'll have to try to turn that up he can't wait for your saturday stream really oh he's gonna so he's gonna watch you play with us oh kitty i'm so excited for that uh you'll have to show us how to play because i think i think you're the the one that's probably played the don't starve the most out of all of us that are gonna play it on saturday <laughs> so that'll be really fun. All right, guys, uh, let's switch over to the thing that we like to start our streams out with, which is a little quiz. So this time we're going to do which female horror archetype are you? That seemed appropriate to me in regards to uh, our Halloween stream. So that's what we're going to do. Let me link it in the chat. You guys can do it with me. If you do, tell me what you get. OK, my name is Karen. So here we go. Uh, oh, let's read the description. You have an important role to play in your own terrifying tale. Are you the final girl or the monster? It depends on your point of view. Also, this is horror-related quiz, so content warning for disturbing injury, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I understand. Okay. Um, it's a you quiz. It's not going to be that disturbing. You know what I mean? Uh, might send Matt in my place. Oh, okay. Sure, Kendra. <clears throat> All right. There's something breathing behind the shower curtain. As soon as it hears you, it'll stop hiding. Arm yourself. Oh, Okay. A knife from the kitchen, a coat hanger from the bedroom, a hammer from the garage, a shovel from the garden shed, a baseball bat from the basement, a candlestick from the dining room. Uh, modern candlesticks are not, <laughs> they're not heavy or anything like that. This wouldn't do anything. Um, a piano wire from the piano in the office, a can of hairspray from your bathroom combined with a lighter in your pocket. Ooh, I was, I was going for the knife and then I read this. This is our choice. Okay. Yeah, Doki Doki is definitely a horror game. Okay, uh, it is tagged horror and everything. Choose a male horror archetype. Okay, the demon, the imposter, the investigator, boy next door, monster, scientist, boogeyman, or stalker. Well, we have to go with the monster since they're giving us that choice, I mean. Although I'm pretty interested also in the scientist and the stalker, but I think the monster. Okay, pick a horror artist. Okay, we've got Trevor Henderson... I don't know how you say this person's name. F Y Y A. I don't. I don't know. This kind of looks like Junji Ito. Um, David Romero, Catchette Whitman, Dapper Mouth, Plastibu, Ole Oleg, Oleg. I don't know how to say this either. Stephen Coldy. Um, this really looks like Junji Ito to me, so I'm gonna choose that because Junji Ito should be on this list. Um, I don't know why he's not. He is the best horror artist. Okay. Um, so there we go. All right, there's blood on your fingers. Where did it come from? My bleeding nose, my lip bitten too hard in a kiss. Oh, <laughs> my last meal, an open wound in my gut that I can't stop poking at. 
a dark wet spot blooming in the wall of my bedroom hmm. uh the soles of my feet torn apart by glass i don't know it's not mine i do know it's not mine <laughs> uh i don't know it's not mine all right your friend invited you to the 70s horror night at the local theater choose a film to watch together um house black christmas suspiria the Wicker Man, Daughters of Darkness, Bay of Blood, Rabid, or Ganja and Hess. Hmm. I think we're going to go with Black Christmas out of these for me. Okay. The ritual requires a sacrifice. Place an offering on the altar. A dead chicken. Caged mouse, still alive and squeaking. Your own ring finger. Oh, gross. A jar of pig's blood. An eyeball plucked when your rival was sleeping. Your baby teeth, one of your lower ribs, several thousand strands of your hair tied together with red twine. We're going for the hair. Wait, it's getting dark in here, isn't it? You need a light source. Which would you like? A flashlight, lighter, lantern, candle, matchbox, torch, glow stick, flare. Oh, okay. I was going to go for the flashlight, but they have a glow stick on here. I got to go for the glow stick. That's too aesthetic. It's too good. Okay. Pick a word to find carved into your headboard. Macabre, carrion, harbinger, larva, sepulchre, perdition, chum, necropsy. Oh, perdition. I like that. I like that. Isn't lighter and torch the best? Yeah, I would think a lighter or a torch is the best, but a glow stick is just too aesthetic. I have to choose it. Um, choose a place to visit tonight in your dreams. Uh, okay. Oh, these are like from liminal spaces. Let's go, let's go to the grocery store. They have food there. Although I'm pretty drawn to this pink room, but I think we're gonna choose grocery store. Okay. During Dante's descent into the inferno, which circle do you, does, does he encounter you? Oh, lust, gluttony, greed, anger, he heresy, violence, fraud, treachery. Um, I mean, as a role player, it's definitely gotta be heresy or lust. I think let's go with heresy. There we go. Okay, you seem nervous. What's bothering you? My skin is itching like there's something, someone else trapped underneath it. Oh, J vibes. <laughs> me, visit me. Okay, Kendra, I'll visit you. <laughs> uh, I just passed a mirror and I don't recognize the face I saw. I can't remember waking up this morning. I don't know how many sharp objects I have at home. If one was gone, I wouldn't notice. There's enough room in my closet for a person to fit and I haven't opened it today. Um, I'm not sure if all my windows are locked. If I went missing, I think it would take a while for anyone to realize. I haven't turned around since I started this quiz. Oh, oh but I got baby cam going. Oh, the babies are gone. I, you, I'm sorry the babies are gone. Hopefully some babies will come back. There's Oreo. Maybe he'll go get in the baby cam. Okay, but we're choosing this one, the mirror one. I like that. Uh, hold on. When did the breathing stop just now? What was that noise? <laughs> I don't do these. You guys know that. Okay. Oh, shoot. It's heard you. Uh, I have to run and hide. Uh, this one. Outside. Okay. Oh, I got the survivor. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> it really does. This is actually a really well designed quiz. Um, I really, I really enjoyed it. It was quite creepy. Okay. I'm the survivor, the finer goal, the fighter, the victor. You're feared because of your resilience, like the heroine. You're the most interested in protection of yourself and others, but unlike her, you are more than willing to give your monster a taste of its own brutality. Your patron saint is Sidney Prescott. You're most compatible with the slasher, your symbiote. Ah, okay. So apparently that's what most, well, it looks like a three-way tie between the survivor, the siren, and the witch. So you can also get the heroine, the she-beast, or the spirit. Those are some good female horror archetypes. I like it. I put the noise <laughs> was me pooping my pants in fear because I'm a scaredy cat. That's funny. Oh, you got the sheepies. Oh, you got the monster. Okay. I like it. Like the witch, you have recently gained power beyond human imagination, but unlike her, your transformation was not a willing one. Your patron saint is Ginger Fitzgerald. Um, you're most compatible with the heroine who's compassionate enough to save you from yourself. Aw. It makes me think of the movie Ginger Snaps, which is a fantastic movie. Okay, guys, it's time. Let's get the game going. Just looking at the audio levels. Maybe turn it down a little bit. It looks like it's almost the same volume as me. I need it to be a little quieter than me. Okay, I think that's right. <clears throat> 
There we go. Turn on the baby cam. Hopefully the babies will come back. Actually, and actually, let's put it. Let's put baby cam down here. Right next to me. There we go. Hopefully they'll come back. All right. Let's pick up where we left off. Hint, you can use the skip button to fast forward through text you've already read. Okay. All right. So before we were, we're, we're going to next do the festival, I think is where we had left off. All right. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Yeah, the kittens, they, they left. Lady was there. Hopefully they'll come back. I mean, they're pretty rambunctious because we just got home today. Sorry, guys, peace <laughs> Wow! That's right. Ah, uh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to, I mean, Sayori fumbles with her words. Oh no, this is too cute. So let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me in a spot here. <laughs> well... <gasps> Guys, what do you think? Do you think we would walk home with Yuri, or would we still walk home with Sayori? I'm not sure. I, I mean, I, Sayori is definitely my second choice, so like, I don't dislike her or anything. I don't know if I would want to not walk home with Sayori, you know what I mean? Yeah, right? Like, she's my walk home friend, and then Yuri is my inside the, the club friend. They can both be my girlfriends if they want to, like, I'm not opposed. I'm not opposed to both. So I think I think I would still walk home with Sayori. <laughs> well, this is a horror game, so I think no matter what we do, something bad's supposed to happen. We'll see. All right. You really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Eh? But she's so beautiful and smart. Jeez. I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Karen. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it, so... So Yuri, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. <laughs> Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? Hmm... The conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care so much about, but I want to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? Oh, poem time! Okay. All right, so here we go. Let's try to do another Yuri poem. We'll make sure it's something good, Monica. Hmm. I'm getting better at these. I think I under- I definitely understand Yuri at this point. I don't even know what words I would choose if I was trying to do, um, Nautico's route down there. Something I'll have to figure out later, I guess. Let's see. Uh, universe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just gotta choose the big words for Yuri. Uh, oh, there's not a clear big word here. Maybe time? Aha! Okay. Mm, destiny? Yeah. Extraordinary. Oh no. Effulgent. I know that's a Yuri word. Okay. Good job. We're back in the club. Oh man, I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Yeah, I did really good on that one, didn't I, Kitty? <clears throat> Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember the club wouldn't be here if it weren't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival, too. Uh, I can't wait for the festival! It's gonna be great. Eh? 
Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival. But it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on! Jane, hey, welcome in! Are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people? Uh, I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because it's right there in your name. Mon Ika. Oh. <laughs> uh, that's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. You're right, it does not. It does not make sense in English. Uh, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for t now today. I agree, Kitty. I love me some calamari. <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me? Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I have my hand in... F I wave my hand in front of her face. Huh? You're spacing out again. Ah, sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything all right? Of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Geez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sayori shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Mochi, hey, welcome in. Oh my gosh, it's been so long since I've seen you in a live stream. I'm so happy to have you here. Um, I guess since there's so many people here, I should say again, there's a big content warning for this um, that was at the beginning of the game, but of course that was last week, so you wouldn't have seen it. Well, all right, if you say so. I worriedly glance at Sayori before turning back towards everyone else. But the conversation has already disappeared with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who's shuffling through some papers at her desk. Karen, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who's idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there's something on her mind, but I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Karen. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really like this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no, it's important to me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try to talk to her myself. Oh, good, so you, okay, so you're caught up then, Mochi. Uh, are you sure about that? She seems like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just had a hard time bringing it up with the person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Karen. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but Sayori talks about you more than anything else, you know? Huh? She's been so much happier ever since you joined the club. She's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it always has been. Hee <laughs> hee. You're so funny, Karen. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful because it's just how she is when she's around you? Ah, uh, I said too much. I'm sorry. What do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. 
I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Ah, uh, alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to put her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her, but she's keeping her voice quiet so I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh on me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room. Suddenly I notice Yuri peering at me from over her book. But she looks away just as quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realize that she won't get anywhere like this. I've never really seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation of her own accord. So I have no choice but to approach her myself. By now, it's a little easier for me to do that. I stand up from my desk and sit in the one next to her own. I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax, you didn't even do anything. But I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How were you even able to tell that I was thinking like that? Well, it's something that I do a lot. Oh, okay. So it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. N not that I was staring or anything. You were totally staring, Yuri. But it's okay. It's okay. I didn't do anything creepy like that. It's okay, Yuri. It's okay. In any case, I guess you were right. I'm sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are only the concern of those who willingly share in that concern. Of course, there are certainly those who find the most comfort in keeping to themselves. But if you would prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. I agree, Yuri can stare all she wants. It's really not that big of a deal. I was just feeling a bit uneasy about Sayori. Sayori? Yeah, she seems a little off today, but when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh. That's quite romantic. Huh? Sorry. I didn't mean to say something stupid. It's not that, I just don't want you to misunderstand. Sayori and I have been friends for a long time, that's all. Uh, I see. Then perhaps it's unusual for her to be dismissive of you about her feelings. Or maybe I'm just reading into it a little too much. Karen. The world is full of meaning, often hidden deep beneath plain sight. And there are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you may know them. Uh, so you think that there might be something behind it after all? Hmm, I think that Siori is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what may be going on inside of her head, and she may not always know what she wants. I noticed her strange behavior today, too. And I also feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looked like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? Well... I guess that was the case. Sayori, she really means a lot to you, doesn't she? I, I guess, but you don't need to put it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. Yuri suddenly looks deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she was searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes, a person's mysteries are untold even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware were in you. That is, I think that she would be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. Yuri? You're giving me too much credit. I'm a pretty simple guy. So I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you. Ah, uh, that's not a compliment, is it? It is what it is. Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it. Yeah. I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyway. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. So I guess I didn't get a scene of reading with Yuri that time. At least we got one last time. Okay. Why don't we all share our poems now? Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. 
Who should I show my poem off to first? Well, Sayori, obviously, because I'm worried about her. And then we'll do Yuri and Monica and Natsuki. Okay. Hmm, it's nice, I guess. Come on, I can already tell you don't like it. Well, you don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Probably Yuri. Oh no, I did write it for Yuri. <laughs> okay, I'm in PJs. What was the trigger warning? It didn't say, and I'm playing this blind so I don't know, but it basically said, this game is not for kids or people who are sensitive. So I don't know what exactly is the issue. I didn't write this for anyone specifically. Maybe that's not really what I meant though, but it's okay. You're making new friends just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club. Well, of course I am. Good. That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Karen. Sayori, so, is there something wrong? Huh? No, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Alright. Just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now. If you insist. Yay! I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sayori? Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. Wait, I didn't even get to see her poem! Oh no. This, this sound, that does not sound good. That does not sound good. Okay, well, let's talk to Yuri. Karen, your writing has only improved in these last few days. Every poem you've shown me has been nothing short of spectacular. I can really feel the emotions. I'm a little envious, even. I don't think it ever came to me this naturally. Yuri, that's the wrong way to put it. This never did come naturally to me. But I've been able to improve so much thanks to you. Right, Kitty? Girls are so confusing. <sighs> so Yuri wants to spend time with me, or she doesn't. Can't even get to read her poem. <sighs> You're really the example I was chasing after. Is that so? Yuri gently smiles to herself. This feeling... I'm so glad I got the chance to share my writing. I never thought it would feel like this. I remember you mentioning that yesterday. I can't believe that you're so good at something and you've never even shared it with anyone. It's kind of a shame. Maybe, but it's not like I really had a choice. What do you mean? Well, Yuri smiles sadly. Karen, during lunchtime, I eat by myself. Did you know that? It's a great time to find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact, I always have some books with me. You could say I really enjoy reading. Well, that's one way to put it anyway. But books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. People you want to fall in love with. Or people you just know would make a really good friend. Cheerful people who always put a smile on your face or deep thinkers and problem solvers who discover the mysteries of life. So when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day, you know? And those friends don't laugh at me and they don't tease me for spacing out all the time. They don't make fun of my body type and, and they don't hate me for acting like a know-it-all. People say that about you? I'm not a know-it-all, Karen. It's the opposite, I don't know anything. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings, and all I can do with them is read and write. But it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you. Yuri, you should have found um, role-playing online when you were younger <laughs> than high school. Yeah, Jane, Yuri unfortunately has some, some back problems. She, she told us about that. Uh, that I really understood what was missing all this time. But I haven't really done anything. No, that's wrong. Just being patient and respectful, that's really important to me. I know I'm a difficult person, Karen. I speak too slowly, I second guess myself all the time, I read too deeply into things, but every time you've always treated me just like anyone else. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others, but that's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see. Well, I treat you how you deserve to be treated, Yuri. And if other people don't see it that way, then screw them. 
I mean, I joined this club hoping I would make friends. And I would say I've had at least one success, wouldn't you? Um, if you put it that way, yeah. We really are friends now, aren't we? Oh, look at her blush face. Yuri puts her head in her hands, but this time she's smiling as she does it. Do you want to show me your poem? Yeah, I do. Let me get it for you. Okay, Ghost Under the Light Part 2. Okay, so we've got another light one. The tendrils of my hair illuminate belief beneath the amber glow, bathing. In the distance, a blue-green light flickers. A lone figure crosses its path, a silhouette obstructing the eerie glow. My heart pounds. The silhouette grows, closer, closer. I open my umbrella, casting a shadow to shield me from visibility, but I am too late. He steps into the streetlight. I gasp and I drop my umbrella. The light flickers. My heart pounds. He raises his arm. Time stops. The only indication of movement is the amber light flickering against his outstretched arm. The flickering light is in rhythm with the pounding of my heart, teasing me to th for succumbing to its forbidden emotion. Have you ever heard of a ghost feeling warmth before? Giving up on understanding, I laugh. Understanding's overrated. I touch his hand, the flickering stops. Ghosts are blue-green, my heart is amber. Finishing the poem, I start to hand it back to Yuri, but instead of taking it from me, she looks away. Do you dislike it? No, of course not. I just don't really know how I should respond. Despite Yuri's poems usually being cryptic, it wasn't hard to figure out what this one was about. <laughs> yeah, this one's a little bit more plain, huh? I don't know if I'll be able to explain this one. That's fine. I understand this one. Yuri is having an even harder time speaking than usual. Does this one mean a lot to you? Yuri nods. I'm not really good with words, but... I'm happy that you shared it with me, so thank you, and I hope we keep spending time together. Despite my inability to make eye contact, I see a faint smile emerge on Yuri's lips. I once again try to hand the poem back to her, but instead, Yuri gently takes my hand and pushes them back towards me. I hesitate in response to her warm touch. You can, um, the poem is... Once again, Yuri fails to form complete sentence. Ah, oh, that's too cute. You mean I can keep it? Yuri nods. I'd love to. Again, Yuri faintly smiles, as if she doesn't want me to notice. You always... you always make me feel nice. I know I'm not good with people, but I hope that I can return the favor sometimes. Yeah. Don't worry. I think you do a good job. Yuri finally turns back towards me. I guess we should move on before Monica says something, but I'm sure we can talk again later. Yeah. I'm sure we will. With that, Yuri timidly smiles at me and I return to my seat so I can put her poem away. All right, Monica next. Hi, Karen. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people, I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it will turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. Haha, <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. Your style's gotten so refined, Karen. Yuri's been teaching you a lot of things, hasn't she? Well, I guess so. Yeah, I've been noticing how much time you spend with her. I think I've heard her say more words these past couple days than she's talked in the whole year. Not sure how you did it, but that's pretty impressive. Well, she just needs some patience and a way to talk about all the things in her head, I guess. I'm still getting the hang of it myself. Hmm, you're certainly putting in a lot of effort. You must really like her. That's... <laughs> it's awfully suspicious, you know. Spending time with her in the club room every day, reading that edgy novel with her... Well, I just feel bad that she has a hard time socializing. Uh, thank you so much for the follow. Stella is the best dog. Stella is the best dog. I totally agree. Yeah, Monica, they don't, the game doesn't let me hit on Monica. They, I can just hit on the other three um, for some reason. I don't know. It makes me want to make sure she doesn't spend all her time alone. Besides, the novel isn't too bad either, you know? All right, all right. I get you. Just be careful, all right? You know that Yuri isn't used to opening herself up, so if something bad happens while she's vulnerable, then it could be really hard for her. Her books aren't a total escape from reality, they're just a bandage. You say that like I'm gonna hurt her. 
Sorry, I didn't mean that. If anything, she might accidentally hurt herself. What? Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, all right? Er, all right. Okay, Monica, are we gonna learn more about how you wanna go into the Matrix? Okay, the lady who knows everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who's found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather. Lost adrift in the sky, victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search. I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains, the last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky. Until one day the wind ceases to blow. I fall, and I fall, and fall, and fall even more. Gentle as a feather, a dry quill expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I'm thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There's no meaning, there's no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. Oh, that's so sad. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sorts of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical, because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in this club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. Uh, are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Monica, I don't know if that's true. Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you'd know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional. Uh, yeah, that. <laughs> but um <-tsh. clears throat> Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier, because instead of just telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way and it'll make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening! That was actually not too bad advice. Um. Yeah, I think Monica's done some not-so-great drugs. <laughs> That's exactly what it sounds like to me too, Kitty. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, no thanks. You didn't even... Next. Oh my gosh! I'm pissed Natsuki off so much that she won't even- she doesn't- won't even do a scene with me! Oh my god. Well, sorry Natsuki, you're a worse girl anyway. Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out... Hold on a second. Is it just me or did you say something strange just now? Huh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. C catchphrase I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Huh. Stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Uh, it seems like you're right. Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to, anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki, please show some decency. <laughs> well, if she didn't say anything, where else do you think she would have gone? That's what I would have thought, too. Oh, come on. Uh... She actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously? All of the time to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well. So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Ah, uh, no! First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Oh? That curious expression coming from Yuri, of all people. Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier and everything is fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. 
I already know what I'm doing. That's right, Natsuki will be making cupcakes. But we might need a lot of them in different flavors. Can you handle all that by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. So Yuri will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri... Yuri, you can... Uh... Guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I... I'm useless. No! Oh my gosh, that's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know? Now Natsuki's pouting too. Jeez, can I even tell now? I guess I never gave Siori enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. Uh, that may be the case. But if I can't also be a leader in my own, then I won't grow as a person. So Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know? So you should make some banners and decorations to help the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that. I... I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes and she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great. You'll be wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Karen. The one who is truly useless. <laughs> oh, don't say that. No, Monica, you misunderstand. This is a positive thing. <laughs> In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I would really appreciate that. Uh, that's... Is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of the club members? How on earth am I going to respond to a suggestion like that? Uh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give you. It's not like Monica is going to give me a choice and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Karen may not like to be around if you only make him out to be a nuisance. So therefore, he may be more suited to assisting with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds more like you're just making excuses for Karen to... W what are you saying? It will be extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't? Oh, thank you for the hydrate, Kendra. Just what do you think... Guys, guys, <clears throat> let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Karen to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten a chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? So I'm sure he's interested in, you literally just said, I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I was just saying that though, jeez, can we just settle this already? Yeah, Karen, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Uh, of course. Hmm. <laughs> Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. <laughs> of course I'm going with, oh, I can still choose Sayori even though she's not here. That's interesting. Yeah, they're totally fighting over me. Well, I mean, I'm gonna choose Yuri. Definitely not Natsuki. This is the first chance I've had anything with Monica really since I can't like do the right poems for her. But um, we're gonna go with Yuri. I mean, we've been choosing Yuri this whole time, so let's keep that up. Well, I'll probably be the most useful helping out Yuri. M me Are you serious? Why would you- Natsuki? Natsuki, you wouldn't even show me your poem this time. You can't possibly be mad. I can already tell you're about to say something mean. N no I was just saying. Ugh. So you'll be helping Yuri then, Karen? Yeah. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sorts of things, so I think your assistance will be very useful. That's great to hear. Natsuki, will you be able to handle the baking yourself? I mean, yeah. I already said I would be fine. Okay, okay. Excuse me. Um, everyone can tell that Natsuki's feeling a little sour. So is that everything we need to go over? Yeah, that should be about it. It's called a tsundere, Karen. Come on. I know, I know, I know. It was just like, Natsuki, I mean... I was into it with the cupcakes, and then she was like instantly mean to me and like, you know, pitting me against Sayori. It was weird, so I did not fall for Natsuki. Uh, maybe if I actually played her route, I would think she was cool, you know, but uh, Yuri, I was drawn to Yuri instantly. Well, excited may not be the right word, but I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. Do you feel the same way, Karen? Me? Yeah, I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Natsuki? Natsuki? What? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything. N no, 
That's not what I meant at all. Uh, Yuri anxiously glances between everyone in the room. I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why Karen picked me. And also, your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They go really well with my tea. And nothing that I do for the event will compare to that, so... So, I get it, I get it. I'm kind of surprised, though. Why? Um, well, I'm the one acting immature. I already know that. But you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. I know I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said something bad. Natsuki isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken aback by Yuri's words. When she already had trouble with words, trying to cheer someone up must be far out of her own comfort zone. But I begin to understand. Yuri was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work w work perfectly, I can tell that she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No, I kind of appreciate it. I'm sorry for making a big deal out of nothing. But I'm gonna say this. You better bet that my cupcakes are gonna be the best part of the whole event. Aha, uh -huh. I believe you. Yeah, I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. All right, let's get out of here then. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monica and Natsuki out the door as they chat between each other. Um, huh? I turn around. Sorry. I realize that I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Oh, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best way, yes. All right then. Yuri and I exchange phone numbers. Okay. Then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Huh? My house? Is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought that it would be... I would be the one going to your house, since I'm the one helping you. I suppose that makes sense. But if you don't mind, I think I would prefer going to your house. Alright. In that case, it won't be a problem. I decide not to press Yuri for a reason. It's not like I sh it should matter much either way, so I just need to make sure my room is clean. I hope I manage to make myself useful in some way. I'm not nearly as creative as you are. Don't under underestimate yourself, Karen. I think that we'll make a very productive team. Even if you only choose me because you felt bad or something. Wait! <laughs> you don't actually think that, do you? Yuri, your best girl, come on, stop it. I don't know. It's difficult to come up with any other reason you may have chosen me. You're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. I choose to help you because that's what I want to do. But... Yuri thinks to herself with an extremely tense expression. Yuri, you're overthinking this. You want me to point out when you're overthinking, right? Uh... I didn't realize. I'm telling you. I want to. That's all there is to it. Do you believe me? I... Yuri thinks really hard again. She looks straight into my eyes for a long while. I believe you. As if it took her tremendous effort, Yuri finally says that and relaxes her expression. And I really look forward to Sunday. Yeah, I am too. After that exchange, I make my way out the door and Yuri follows. I can't believe this. Yuri's going to be coming to my house on Sunday. My anxiety shoots through the roof. Even though I've gotten pretty used to hand handling her at this point, there's no telling what might end up happening when we're outside of school. More than that, she told me that she was looking forward to it. Is this the chance I have to make something happen between us? Or is it too early for that? Only time will tell. But until then, I won't be able to take my mind off of it. I seriously can't wait. It's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri is clearly an introvert and also an intimate person in general. There's no doubt that she'll open up a little bit when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, we've even been texting occasionally. She was extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning more about her. But putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard a thing from Sayori since she left the club early the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sayori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? Yeah, Kitty, I guess she, she shouldn't be in her school outfit, right? Like, she should be in something else. Um, I decide to visit Sayori before Yuri comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. 
Again, we used to play so often that we've made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we're family. The house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. Uh-oh. I'm nervous, guys. I head up to her bedroom where I finally find her. Sayori? Hi, Karen. I sit down in her room. Sayori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Uh, I guess you're right. It's been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Sayori's room is messy, as it's always been. I also recognize the same stuffed animal and wall decorations that she's had for years now. <laughs> if you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Yuri today? Yeah, but... Wait, how did you know that? Sayori had already left by the time we decided that last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Uh, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course. But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Uh, so it's just me and Yuri then? Yep. There's more silence between us. Sayori stares in a random direction. She is! Sayori's really cute. Um, everything about her behavior is uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday. When something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So... Sayori smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Karen. Huh? Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have even been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. What? Sayori? Hey, Lunar, welcome on in. Yes, Sayori. We're on the uh, Sunday, so we're going to go over and see Yuri, but we stopped at Sayori's first since she had left the club early on Friday. I grabbed Sayori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something's happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Uh... Sayori gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Karen, but you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayori? <sighs> you're really just going to make me say it, aren't you, Karen? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why do I, why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy without anyone worrying about me. Oh my gosh, poor Sayori. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Sayori kept this from me the entire time I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me to just not think about her? Why, Sayori? Huh? Why is it that you never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much I can do. I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, Karen. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. <sighs> That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else, too. 
Seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone in the club, it feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, Karen. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped is if everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Sayori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish, and I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you've come here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments, because I deserve every last one. Oh my god. Without thinking, I once again grab Sayori's shoulders. This time, I pull her into a tight embrace. Ugh, oh, Karen. Sayori. I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. So please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Karen. Sayori isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sayori's arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No, don't do this to me. Please don't do this. Karen. I... Sayori barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything that you need me to do, then you better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Sayori finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Karen. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm, and that's really scary too. Sayori lets me go. As she does so, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah. It's gonna be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Um, it's what I want, I promise. I, I think that would be nice then. Yeah, Sayori wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't. Please don't. If you did that, then I wouldn't forgive you, but it's almost time for Yuri to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Sayori shakes her head. I'm sorry, I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Uh, it's kind of hard for me to fully understand, but I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Alright, I look forward to it. Thank you for the hydrate, Lunar. I will do that. That was so sad, you guys. Oh my god. I knew there was something wrong with these girls. And I think all the other ones are depressed, too. I say goodbye to Siori and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy, but it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri's about to come over, too. I think Siori's right. I shouldn't be worrying too much, and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. I don't think we're going to have a great time tomorrow, guys. I really don't. I mean, it's a game, so narratively, we, should, we, we were not, we're not going to have a great time tomorrow. I can tell. Um, as I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Yuri? Ah, uh, thank goodness. You're a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting for a long time? No, I just got here. But I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You always could have texted me. If I'd known, I would have reassured you and hurried more on my way home. I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that for some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I decided to ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yeah, pretty much. At least I hope I got everything right. I'm sure it'll be fine. 
I take Yuri to my room. The first thing she does is glance around curiously, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. It is really clean, actually. <laughs> the drawing of this room is very clean and straightened up. <laughs> I cleaned it before you came over, so it's very considerate of you to do. I uh, know. I would be really embarrassed for my room to be a mess while you're here. Hmm, well, I do enjoy cleaning. I would have gladly helped you clean. Uh, that would be even more embarrassing. <laughs> Wait, don't look in there. I snatch Yuri's wrist, which was in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Uh, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine. I let go of Yuri's wrist. She puts both of her hands firmly in her lap, as if making sure she's keeping track of them. <laughs> Yuri, don't open the drawer, you're gonna find the mess. <laughs> so, um, should we get started? Uh, yes. Um, I have a few things planned that you can help with. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. Right, Kitty, but you're not supposed to snoop when the person is still there in the room. You're supposed to wait till they leave to go to the bathroom or something, and then you snoop. Atmospheric enhancements? You know, mood lighting, aromatherapy candles. Oh, wow. I didn't know you planned on taking it that far. Of course. I want to help take our guests to a faraway place. Although many will stop by just out of curiosity. And for cupcakes, I guess. I'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more. That's great. It's easy to forget that you're a pretty intense person. Huh. <sighs> intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. It did sound like cupcake shade. I, I agree, Kitty. <laughs> it's something that I like about you, actually. Is that so? That makes me feel relieved. And kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be so anxious. You can relax a little. Relax. I brought some things for relaxation. I was gonna use them during the poetry event. Oh yeah, like what? Let's see. Yuri rummages through her bag. She pulls out a few candles and wooden cylinder-shaped objects. I did some shopping on the way here, so I happened to have these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows in black paper and use the candles to light the room. I think that would be amazing, don't you? Yeah, that would be really neat. What's the wooden thing, though? Oh, this? It's a diffuser for essential oils. How familiar are you with aromatherapy? Not familiar at all. Is that so? It's one of my favorite contributors to a positive atmosphere. Depending on the oils or herbs you choose, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can even feel it permeate through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Yuri takes the cylinder and pushes a switch on the bottom. In just a moment, a thin ray of vapor begins to spout through a small hole in the top. Wow, that smells wonderful. What kind of mood is that one for? This is a jasmine essential oil. It smells a little sweet and flowery, right? Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I chose jasmine for the event because it provides more than relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and helps you feel them flow through your body. You feel warmer and your heart pounds more heavily. Don't you think that will be the perfect for sharing our poems? It does sound suitable. But you seem to know a lot about this and I'll trust your opinion with anything. Yuri smiles gently, clearly enjoying herself. She again reaches into her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are those for? Well, did you purchase the origami paper I asked you to get? Yeah, I have it over here. We won't be using the paper for folding origami. What I'd like to do is write a different word on each paper. We'll need about a hundred of them. Oh yeah? What will those be used for? Well, I'm gonna cut pieces of ribbon to hang them from the doorway of the classroom. Then we can fasten the paper to the ribbons and create a doorway curtain. Wouldn't that be beautiful? It would also catch the eye of those passing by the room. It may attract some people to peek inside. That's really creative. I had no idea you'd be so good at this, Yuri. Is that so? Well, I suppose I do get a little intense, as you put it. <laughs> Yuri giggles with red cheeks. Is it just me or is she more relaxed when it's just the two of us? Or maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing something that she enjoys. Here's a marker, Karen. You can write any characters you want. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ribbons. Uh, all right. Sitting on the floor together, the two of us get to work. I carefully draw a certain character on each paper, doing my best to manage my bad handwriting. Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon to her desired length. Then she reaches into her bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Huh? 
This knife is strangely beautiful. The silver handle has an intricate pattern of waves etched into it. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. It looks really fancy. Uh, well... Embarrassed, Yuri looks away. What is it? You're not gonna think it's weird. Yuri, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. Teach their own, you know? If you promise, you won't be weirded out. Yeah, I promise. Alright. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. They're just so pretty. I can't help it. I don't know what it is. The combination of craftsmanship and feeling of danger, maybe? What am I saying? Please don't think I'm weird for this. <laughs> You're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. It's just funny how nervous you get about sharing. Yeah, I don't think it's weird, Yuri. I'm just a little worried for you, considering some of the poems you've written about the raccoon and stuff. It's, well, it's an interesting thing to be into, I guess. But I think it's kind of suits you. Suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense. Besides, it's a really cool-looking knife. I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? Yuri relaxes her expression once again. Would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. Yuri carefully hands me the knife with the handle facing me. I take it and turn it around in my hands. It feels heavy and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? Curious of its sharpness, I feel the point of the knife with my index finger. Ow! Karen, why'd you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. It's my fault. I should have warned you. This knife is extremely sharp. It can cut through skin like it's paper. Oh shit. Oh no. A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Uh, she stares at it and noticeably fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Ugh, without warning, Yuri puts my finger in her mouth and licks the wound. <clears throat> I feel her tongue curl around my finger. Startled, I instinctively put my hand back. Oh, please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. I... Yuri lowers her head, her face burning up. Yuri, that's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How could I do something like that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, sure, it was a little weird, and it took me by surprise. But I guess she was just trying to help, right? Yuri, I think you're overreacting a little. She's not overreacting. She is not overreacting. Okay, that was... Woo! <clears throat> she doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover from this for the rest of the afternoon? All right, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I do it anyway. I take Yuri's hand and lick her index finger in return. <laughs> um, Kitty, I, I cut my finger on Yuri's knife because I didn't realize it was sharp, apparently, and um, she, she took my bloody finger and stuck it in her mouth. <laughs> That's what happened. I was not expecting that. <laughs> Karen, did you really just do that? Now we're even. Yuri looks at me like I did something wrong. <laughs> I knew that would be a bad idea. If not for the sweet aroma of jasmine oil, the air would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, Karen. Yuri giggles shyly. For real. <laughs> for real, kitty. Get it, Yuri. <clears throat> Yuri calling me weird. I have no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? Uh, I don't think I need one, actually. It was a tiny cut. Look, it already stopped bleeding. I see. That's relieving. The tension is quickly lifted. We each resume our respective activities. I watch Yuri's knife cup through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue to make progress on the paper. After we finish attaching the paper to the ribbons, we lay them all out side by side. It looks better than I expected, and it will be very effective as a door curtain. It looks great. Good thinking coming up with this, Yuri. Uh, thanks. It's just something I saw online, really. Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? I'd like to create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy the pink tablets. Ah, uh, that's right. One of the items Yuri asked me to buy was a kit of watercolor paint tablets. We'll need about six cups of water to put each of the tablets in. Do you mind fetching those for us? Of course not. Six cups of water. I'll be right back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a little bit of water is okay. If you fill the cups too much, it'll be too diluted. Taking Yuri's advice, I decide to use a small plastic bathroom cups rather than full-size glasses. I put them on a plate to catch any paint that drips and then bring it back into my room. Yuri, 
Yes. I come in to see Yuri unrolling her sleeve, pulling it back over her arm. Uh, nothing. This is not good, you guys. We found out Sayori is depressed. It seems like Yuri is a cutter. This is, uh... This is not going well. It's too hot Is it too hot in here or anything? Uh, no, not at all. There's nothing wrong, so let's mix the paint. Yuri hurriedly dismisses me and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets, dropping them into the cups. So, I thought we would do something simple that would look very nice. I'd like to paint a gradient across the banner, starting with the colors for sunrise, then daytime, then sunset, and nighttime. Once it dries, we'll write an inspirational quote across the banner. We can hang it on the wall behind the podium in front of the classroom. Ah, uh, neat! What are you going to write? Well, it'll be more fun to surprise you. Yuri smiles at me. If you say so. After rolling out the banner, Yuri and I kneel on opposite sides so we don't get in the way of each other. Yuri uses a brush and adds a few dots of different colors across the banner to serve as a color guide when we paint. Excuse me, this kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on a banner with watercolors feels a lot like art class projects we had back then. It's relaxing. Uh, I'm sorry if this feels too childish. No, I didn't mean that at all. It's kind of fun, you know? Yeah, it's fun. I'm glad you feel that way too. Yuri stops painting for a moment, thinking to herself. For me, I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. In fact, I usually don't even want to. I just like it when I can spend time with one other person, even if it's something simple like reading. It doesn't even matter if we don't talk much. Just having a friend next to me makes things feel a little bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if Yuri and I are quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. I feel that way about things like anime and games, where simply sharing the experience with someone can make me happy. I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you'd understand. Yuri leans over the banner to grab an unused paintbrush. But I move at the same time, causing my head to bump into hers. Aha! Sorry! Yuri reels back and I quickly lift my hands in surprise. Are you hurt? No, I'm not hurt. It just startled me, that's all. Sorry, I should have asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. Uh, your face. There are droplets of paint on Yuri's face and neck. Is there something on my face? Yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll get a towel right away. I rush out and fetch a small towel, then I damp it with hot water. I return to my room and kneel back down in front of her. Here. I pat down Yuri's face and neck with the towel. Oh, nice different picture here. Is something wrong? It's hot, I just didn't expect it. Sorry. I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I start to retract my hand, but Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. Wait. Just for a little longer. It feels really nice. Um, I keep my hand still against Yuri's neck. She looks into my eyes. It's an intense expression that I recognize from when she reads her books almost as if she's lost in a daze, enveloped by her own thoughts. She breathes gently, half through slightly parted lips. What's happening? Is it the aroma of jasmine oil giving me this dizzy feeling? Yuri's gentle fingers wrapped around my wrist send a tingling sensation through my arm, and suddenly her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Uh, Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry. I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. I didn't mean to space out. It's fine. The moment is over as soon as it began. I guess even if Monica's not here to cock block me, I still don't get a kiss. All right, that's fine. Yuri picks up her brush again, but her movement seemed clumsier, like she's unable to focus. I remain silent, forced to ignore the event that just transpired. I hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue following Yuri's example. That should do it. I finish filling the night sky with white dots that look like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's very pretty and natural looking. I think it came out better than I expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, me too. Are you gonna add the lettering now? Uh, not yet. It needs to dry first. That's true, but it won't... Won't that take a while? Well, perhaps it would be best to leave it here and then have you bring it in the morning. I can do the lettering in the classroom before our event starts, is that okay? That's totally fine. Wonderful. In that case... I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. Phew. You say that like you're glad it's over. Was I wrong to assume that you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit? Uh, no, it's not that. 
I'm just glad that we managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. Uh, so you don't have any time left? I was secretly hoping we'd have extra time after finishing the work. Well... Yuri thinks to herself. I think it would be too irresponsible of me to wait much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there'd be more time as well. It's probably my fault. Sorry for being such a slow worker. No, it's not your fault at all. And the important thing is that we got everything done, right? Yeah. So... I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Gathering all her things, Yuri seems to look a little downcast. I understand why. It sounded like she rarely got the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. But that doesn't mean that it's the last time it can happen. Once Yuri packs up, I walk her out to the front door. Yeah, Kitty, I noticed that lightheaded thing too. <clears throat> Thank you very much for having me today. No problem, I'm glad I was able to help. You just let me know if there's anything else you need me to bring tomorrow. I will. Well then, Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait. I kind of say that without thinking. About today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted. Because we can do this again. Whenever you want. You can come over, or we can go out somewhere, and... I forgot you don't like to go out much. I stumble over my words. Yuri simply smiles bashfully. Anyway... I, you know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful, Karen. Yuri takes a step closer to me, then briefly squeezes my hand. I kind of like that about you. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? I didn't even get a chance to as Yuri suddenly pulls back. So Yuri... Huh? Huh? Hi, Karen. Oh! <laughs> Hi, Sayori. Uh, just now, we weren't. <laughs> it's okay, Karen. I just stopped by to say Hi. Um, well, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry, but I'm already on my way to leave. Oh, really? That's too bad. I'm sorry. But we'll all be together at the festival tomorrow, so... So it's fine, right? Of course. Sayori so beams. Yeah, so... I'll see you tomorrow. Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. Well, her, her, her picture just whoosh <laughs> across the screen. <laughs> uh, Sayori so waves goodbye after her. Sayori, so I thought you didn't want to come over today. Well, I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was being really mean to me, so I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Yuri, and how close you got to her. It makes me really happy that you made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall down Sayori's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Karen? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. Oh my god, Sayori, I'm so sorry. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Sayori, don't say that. It's true, Karen. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Sayori, what I said before is true. It's not gonna let- I'm not gonna let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm gonna be by your side and you don't feel any more pain. But- Sayori looks away. I put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Karen. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that- that I might like you more than you like me. Sayori, it's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Karen, I like you so much that I want to die. Oh my god, that's how I feel. Sayori, calm down. And that's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. Don't you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings, I know that you need the most right now. And that's what I'm going to give you. <gasps> Sayori. Oh my gosh. I can't say dearest friend after that. Okay. I love you, I love you, okay? 
I love you, Sayori. I love you. Huh? Those are my true feelings, so there's no way you could like me more than I like you. I should have realized it sooner. But spending time with everyone at the club, making new friends, and having fun with you every day, it helped me realize that you are truly the most important person to me. That's why I'll accept any of your burdens, as long as we continue like this every day, with you by my side. Then I know we'll both be happy. Yamo, I feel like I chose the only thing I, I could. I have to make a good story. I have to tell her I love her. The other choice would not be a good story. I have to tell her this. Okay. <clears throat> and welcome in, by the way, Yamo. <laughs> uh, then I know we'll both be happy. Karen. Oh, look at that hug. Mm. Suddenly, Sayori wraps her arms tightly around me. Karen, is this really okay? Yeah. I hold Sayori in my arms and pull her closer. You'll never have to let go of me again. I love you, Karen. I want to be with you forever. Me too. I feel Sayori's grip around me weaken a little bit. What is this, Sayori? I'm supposed to be happy right now. I always thought this would be the happiest moment for me. But why, even now, why won't the rain clouds go away? They're not going away at all, Karen. Oh, Sayori, it's okay. That's not how depression works, honey. I might take some time for things to get better again. But no matter how long it takes, I'll be there every step of the way. That's all that matters right now. Okay, I trust you. Sayori and I slowly release each other. So, I guess that makes the festival tomorrow our first date. What are you saying? I don't want to think about those things, you know? I want everything to be the same as it's always been, even if we really are a couple. I don't know if I could handle anything more right now. It's really new and scary to me. I understand. We'll go at whatever pace suits you best. Hey, Karen. Sayori gazes at me once again, smiling sadly. Even if I get really, really sad, this is the best thing for me, right? Huh? I don't really understand what Sayori means by that. Are you saying that this is making you feel sad, Sayori? I don't know. I don't understand what I'm feeling. It felt like a bunch of thorns when you told me you loved me. But that's why I want to trust you. You know what's best for me. Yeah, I do. That's my promise. I say that, but in reality, I've never felt more uncertain when it comes to Sayori. I know that I love her and she loves me, but I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back the way they were. Is that what Sayori meant by not wanting anything to change? I don't know, but I know that I'll give it everything I've got. Sayori is the most important person to me. And I'll do whatever it takes to have a happy future with her. Oh my gosh, too much, too much is happening all at the end. This game was so like light and fluffy and nothing was really happening. And then all of a sudden at the end, they're like, pow, pow, pow. Whew, okay, it's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Sayori, but Sayori isn't answering her phone. I considered going to her house to wake her up, but I decided that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. The banner Yuri and I painted is dry, and I gently roll it up to take it with me. She sent me a pleasant text reminding me not to forget anything, and I reassured her. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. The more excited for it, to, I'm more excited for it to be over, so I can spend time with Sayori and Yuri at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event is going to be great too. Karen, you're the first one here. Thanks for being early. That's funny, I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica's placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be ones she prepared that have all the poems we're performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. A dummy. You'd think that on, this, on days this important she'd try a little harder. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Sayori told me yesterday, and I suddenly feel awful, knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. 
but maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. Ahaha, uh -huh. you should take a little responsibility for her, Karen. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know. Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. But, I stammer, embarrassed. Did Sayori really tell her about it that quickly? That we're a couple now? I didn't really plan on bringing it up with anyone yet. Geez, you don't know the full story at all, so don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Huh? Monica's being friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Why would Monica know all of that stuff when she's only been friends with Sayori for like a year? <clears throat> Whatever Monica said to Sayori, she, she can go pound sand. I agree, Kitty. Um, something, Monica's like influencing in a negative way, I feel. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grab one of the pamphlets laid out on the desk. Oh yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flip through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving an almost professional feel. I recognize Natsuki's and Yuri's poems from the one they performed during the practice. What's this? I flip to Siori's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. It's one that I haven't read before. Oh no. Get out of my head, get out of my head, get out of my head, get out of my head. Oh my gosh. Get out of my head. Get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But the poem's never actually finished. Uh, what is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Karen, what's wrong? Nothing. This poem feels completely different from everything else Sayori's written. But more than that, I changed my mind. I'm gonna go get Sayori, so, uh, well, all right. Try not to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. Monica calls out after me. I quicken my pace. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder in Sayori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help her wake up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they've always been. That's all she needs, and that's what I want to give her. I reach Sayori's house and I knock on the door. I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I opened the door and let myself in. Oh no. See. Oh no. I don't want to click. I don't want to click, you guys. <sighs> she's a really heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house it really is something that a boyfriend would do, isn't it? In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori, wake up, dummy. There's no response. <gasps> oh no, guys. I really didn't want to have to enter her room like this. I don't want to enter her room either. Isn't it kind of a breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. So... <gasps> Oh no, you guys! I didn't check on her this morning! <gasps> what the hell? What the hell? Is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Sayori so wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppressed the urge to vomit. Just yesterday, I told Sayori I would be there for her. I told her I know what's best and that everything will be okay. And why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Confessing to her. I shouldn't have confessed to her. That's not what Sayori needed at all. She even told me how painful it is for others to care about her. Then why did I have to confess to her and make her feel even worse? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. If I had just spent more time with her, walked her to school, and remained friends with her, like it always has been, then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. 
Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I can do to bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. It is, actually. <laughs> Thank God. Um, I only had one chance and I wasn't careful enough. And now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. But I still couldn't do what she needed from me. And now I can never take it back. Never, 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 never. Oh no. Oh. And now she's glitched out. Like, mostly Monica, but little bits of the other girls. And there's this weird new start. Um, it's only 8 o'clock. Let's... I just want to see what happens. I know this is an ending, and I don't think- we don't have time to play a whole nother route, of course. Oh my god. Whew. Guys, my, my heart is like pounding. That was so sad. Okay, I want to see what happens if I click this. Uh? What? It's her name is all jacked up. Oh. What the hecking heck? Huh? So Yuri's just not here. I can't. She's just gone. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Oh my god, I'm just gonna go to the club by myself, because there's no Sayori. <sighs> what? It's just like literally the whole game without Sayori. Oh my god. Oh my god. So I accidentally got rid of her and now I can't go back and like do her route. That's why it talks about refreshing your save. Okay, okay. I understand. I understand. Oh no. Okay, well I have to start over I think. To do everything in this game but anyway we got to an ending um and we see how it goes and um i'm gonna go ahead and stop there i guess i'll go ahead and save this oh they're all empty the other save that i had isn't here what is history oh this is the transcript if i miss a line i guess okay well Happy Halloween, guys! That was- this game is creepy as fuck. Um, I'm definitely going to play again on my own so I can see all of it. Uh, cause I'm really super curious now about the other girls. I, I think I know for Yuri we got to know her well enough that, um, she's got a, a self-harm problem and- and that's how her story unfolds, but now I'm like super curious about Natsuki. Um, and, uh, and- and what happens if I choose to do the festival stuff with Monica instead. Um, and what happens to her. Um, so I'm definitely gonna play some more. This this is absolutely horror that's a little bit more my speed, um, obviously, than the horror game we played last year. Uh, even though this really got me going, it, um, even though this really got me going, this, uh, this was really fun. This was really fun. Okay, here we go. Let's go back to webcam only for a minute and actually close this out. Yes, I do want to quit. Doki Doki isn't over until the credits roll at least once. I assume that I need to get, like, go through all of their roots, um, at least somewhat for that to happen. Uh, that's, that's what I, I assume, kind of, what, from what we've done so far. They did a really, yeah, oh my god. It, all the girls were, um, were compelling, at least in some way. Um, you could kind of see what was coming, that something was wrong with each of the girls, but you really didn't, it, it really wasn't clear until you were so invested that you had to keep going anyway. Um, so 
really fantastic game. Really fantastic game. I'm, I'm very impressed. And you know something else that I am realizing from choosing to do this for my Halloween stream? I really like playing these um, dating sims on stream. For them, I've tried to play dating sims before, but I tend to get bored with them before I really finish them. Uh, the stories are kind of slow for me, and a lot of times they really just feature, you know, cute high school age girls like like this one does, and that's not very um, interesting for me, to say the least. Um, but after playing Boyfriend Dungeon, which that had a little bit more to it, so it was a little easier for me to engage with it and why I loved it so much, and then playing this one on stream, which is much, was a much more traditional dating sim, of course, except for the horror ending. Um, I really, really liked it, so I think I might be playing some more uh, dating sims on stream with you guys. They're, for me, playing it on stream with y'all makes it very entertaining in a way that playing it by myself um, does not. So, yeah. There's also Doki Doki Plus. Well, I might have to get Doki Doki Plus. The regular Doki Doki was a free game, but oh my gosh, it was so good. I might have to get the, the Plus one. I've seen the Plus one. It's uh, it's it's not for free. Um, But yeah, holy crap. Whew, I'm still like... Whew. Where's the kitty cat? Oh, so Lady is there, but y'all can't... Oh, you see her in the back. There's Lady. I need to pet my kitty for a second. Cause I'm, like, my heart is racing. Lady, hello. Hello, girl. Hello. She's still my little Pokemon following me everywhere, even though we were gone for a while. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Where's my kitty? Where's my kitty? Okay. <laughs> All right, guys, let's find somebody to, to raid. <sighs> yeah, but I think, um, but this was really, really fun. It makes me, like, think, you know, maybe we could do some other blind, um, hello, lady, some other blind uh, dating sim type games. Probably not horror like this one. I don't know if there's any other horror ones, but, like, some, you know, some more traditional ones with uh, more typical <laughs> dating sim stories. <laughs> All right, guys, here we go. We are going to raid um, Madam MG. She is doing some Halloween crafting, and I want to keep the spooky going. So, okay, say bye. We're going to raid Madam MG, so here we go. All right, you guys know where to find me. I do things just like every other content creator does. Say bye, lady. Bye, everybody. It was fun being spooky with you guys. All right, we'll see you later. We're doing Don't Starve Together on Saturday. Be there for that. Spooky Stardew. And uh, next week for Artistic License, we're getting back to... Um, Final Fantasy X, so I will see you guys there for that. And of course, as always, don't forget to make it a great day.